big news from the president's hometown of New York City, well, his former hometown, where a man named Frank James has been apprehended after now allegedly firing over 30 rounds into a crowded subway in Brooklyn, New York, shooting 10 commuters. Now, tonight, the perpetrator's twisted motives and ideology are coming into focus in what are a series of deranged videos filled with violent rhetoric posted on YouTube. Well, James was railing against white people, Asian Americans, Jewish Americans, Hispanic Americans, and the United States of America. He even trashed Joe Biden's Supreme Court no nominee, Judge Jackson, because she, quote, married a white man. James also filmed himself on the streets of New York screaming racial, racial slurs at Asians and Hispanics as they walked by, telling them they shouldn't exist. And according to social media, he was also a big supporter of screwy Louis Farrakhan, Louis Farrakhan of the Nation of Islam. Now, naturally, this story will be swept under the rug by the media mob. I guess Frank James probably won't fit their political narrative. In fact, one disappointed former MMS DNC host tweeted, quote, police say the suspect is a male black. Damn, damn, damn. How about we just get the bad guy and we protect the good guys, all people. Anyway, coming up, we'll get President Trump's reaction to this attack. The deteriorating conditions in America's major cities, law and order, safety, security, can't pursue happiness without it. First, more bad news from Biden's disastrous economy. You thought it was bad yesterday. Well, we can now report brand new numbers out today. Wholesale prices have surged by a whopping 11.2% in March. This is the highest increase year over year ever in history. When Donald Trump left office, it was 1.6%. And make no mistake, these costs, wholesale prices, they will be passed on to you, the consumer. Wholesale price increases are paid by the people like us that buy retail. Look at your screen. Wholesale prices have been rising during the entire Biden presidency, month after month, worse and worse. And it's not Vladimir Putin's fault. Just like inflation, like we showed you last night, also has been on a steep incline ever since the day that Joe Biden was sworn in just like gas prices, as you can see right there, uh, which is why they were rising way before Vladimir Putin invaded Ukraine. This is an excuse. These are three big lies told by Joe Biden and, of course, his minions in the media mob. Now, keep in mind, when Donald Trump left office, an average gallon of gasoline at the pump was $2.42. Inflation was only 1.4%, not 8.5%. And clearly, Biden's Green New Deal, climate alarmist socialist agenda, is an unmitigated disaster. You don't have to graduate from Harvard or MIT to figure that out. Now, he restricted domestic oil and gas produ production. He killed the Keystone XL pipeline. By the way, the premier in Alberta made the statement that had he not stopped production, it would be finished by now, and we would be importing 900,000 uh, barrels of oil, Canadian oil, every single day. We could get back to building it and get that oil and even help out our friends uh, in Western Europe. Anyway, he spent trillions of dollars on handouts. The economy is now suffering in every way imaginable and about to get worse. But today, as we predicted right here on this show Monday, we told you on Monday that the numbers were coming out Tuesday and Wednesday. We told you that, that Jen Psaki, Joe Biden and company would be full of excuses, starting with blame Vladimir. Take a look. So does the president then acknowledge any responsibility for the inflation that we're seeing now based on the decisions that he's made when he came into office? Well, I would say, as the president has talked about quite a bit, there are a range of factors, including uh, the pandemic, the impact on the supply chains, and our effort. And what we've tried to do from the beginning is take steps to address that. Given energy is such an, a significant driver of this data, an increase in energy prices over the last month plus since the invasion of Ukraine. That's factual. That's based on data that we have seen out there. So our effort and our focus has been to try to address it and take mitigation measures when we can. All right, circle back, Jen Psaki. You can see there, by the way, well, she'll be great on MSDNC because they never tell the truth. Anyway, she's not fooling anybody. Look at this Quinnipiac poll out today. A plurality of Americans think Biden is the most responsible for the spike in gas prices and, of course, the record high inflation. Uh, now, more new numbers today from Quinnipiac. It found that their polling is showing Joe Biden's approval rating at its lowest point ever. 
33 percent. Only 26 percent of independents approve of Joe Biden. Now, today, five different polls have Biden underwater by double digits. Americans are not happy. Biden's religious climate alarmist uh, policies have been a nightmare. But instead of, of going to the simple answer, changing course, admitting failure, the Biden administration just double, doubles down on what's not working. And today, Biden's Treasury Secretary vowed to redouble her efforts to decarbonize our economy. No, we should be drilling, we should be fracking, and we should be extracting coal. That is the lifeblood of the world's economy, but why go for the obvious? Take a look. The recent IPCC reports confirm that our window of opportunity to leave our planet worthy of our children and our grandchildren is even closer to being permanently shut. We must redouble our efforts to decarbonize our economies recognizing that countries will use a range of tools, including carbon pricing, regulation, and subsidies to achieve needed emission reductions. Yeah, they decarbonize, and then we become more dependent on, let's see, Russia, Iran, OPEC, Venezuela. Not a good uh, plan for national security reasons. In other words, even less domestic production of the lifeblood of our economy, which is oil, gas, et cetera, and costs that will continue to rise every single uh, week, every single month for every single American. What's the def definition of insanity? Isn't that doing the same dumb thing over and over again and expecting a different result? Because that's what they're doing. They don't care if you suffer. They don't care if you have trouble paying your bills. They don't care if your life gets worse. They don't care about the high cost of a gallon of gasoline. They just lecture you on driving less and getting electric cars that most people can't afford. Their religious climate alarmist cult, that's the only thing that matters. Your sacrifice is but a small price to pay. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.